and welcome. You are watching Health and Wellness Myths and Facts. Uh, most people have a basic idea about what hormones really are, but may not really have a full understanding of what their role and function is in the human body. Hormones uh, play a role in almost everything that your body does, which means that even small changes in your hormones can have noticeable effects. Women's health is already a global priority and poised to emerge as an even greater and more urgent one for the post-pandemic world that we're living in. Women's health is the net result of the interplay between hormones, gender, sex, genetics, biology and the socio-cultural environment. Hormones play a critical role in defining the biological basis of sex differences and a very pivotal role in a woman's health throughout her life. Now, when female hormonal imbalance becomes an issue, the consequences can manifest themselves throughout the body, taking a toll on a woman's health and the quality of her life. There are some conditions that can be prevented while others would require long-term treatment. Hormonal disorders can generally be managed well with proper medication and treatment. We have a panel of expert endocrinologists who will provide accurate and actionable advice to prevent the development of hormonal disorders and guide you, the viewer, towards effective long-term management strategies. Joining us is Dr. Harish Joshi, consultant endocrinology, metabolism and diabetology, super specialty clinic and hormone diagnostics, Hubli. We also have uh, Dr. Sri Devi Patnala, endocrinologist, CD Diabetes and Endocrine Center, Sikandrabad, and Dr. Shivendra Varma, uh, vice chairperson endocrinology, diabetes and metabolism, Chandan Hospital, Lucknow. Thank you very much, doctors, for being with us. Dr. Joshi, to you first. It's been observed that cases of hormonal disturbances are increasing in women of all ages. Is it because of changing life style and what according to you are some of the common causes for these hormonal disorders that are rising in women regarding the lifestyle factors in today's world we all us uh, of us are more you know in the academic um, excellence mode so we don't bother much about the diet and we are you no know, we don't have enough time to take care of a diet the parents both are working so children also are more you know in the habit of eating uh, ready to carry and ready to eat food stuffs and that uh, contributes to the weight gain that we all are seeing nowadays and the lack of uh, physical activities is a associated problem all of these contribute to you know the teenagers uh, getting more weight at a very young age and that eventually disrupts the what we call the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal cycles so gonads refers to the ovary in a woman right and the ovarian cycling which starts at the time of puberty around 13 or 14 years of age is very much you know sensitive to the fat muscle ratio so if there is lack of activity you know and uh, more of uh, this uh, junk foods that we have then we always uh, we end up with uh, what we call lack of proper stimulation of the ovulation in the ovary and that creates this what we call delayed ovulation and uh, its attendant side effects along with this we have also have something called as endocrine disruptors which we all are aware of but we are unfortunately unable to address it adequately in the western field the endocrine disruptors have been worked upon india also what does this mean the chemicals that we have in our food chain in the water sources they contribute to it it could be let's say the plastic containers which contain bisphenol a that can interfere with the uh, endocrine uh, enzymes and the receptor at the receptors level it can contribute to obesity and pcos pcod also contribute to thyroid disorders the deep borewell water that we use the heavy metal content that it has and the wrong type of filters many times that we have in our uh, water filtration mechanisms all these are you no know, factors which contribute to the current uh, problems that we see nowadays in our uh, population right um dr shri devi if i can ask you uh, you know women are more likely to develop hormonal imbalance disorders as compared to men which are some of these disorders that are more common in women and and why is it so come from younger age to older age the most common disorder seen in adolescent uh, girls is pcos which is an hormonal imbalance which results in irregular menstrual cycles and other uh, cosmetic problems like unwanted hair and all and this is mostly due to genetic factors and girls gaining more weight because of lack of proper physical activity and eating junk food and stress as well as jobs like night shifts etc other very common disorders which are seen in women are thyroid disorders are more prevalent in women because most of the thyroid disorders are autoimmune nature and autoimmunity disorders are more in females because of the genetic background of two x chromosomes and the is female Male hormone called estrogen affects the immunity in women, which leads to more autoimmune disorders. 
Another very important endocrine problem or say metabolic problem is obesity. Women in general are more obese than men. That is because of the social factors like decreased mobility when compared to men, sedentary lifestyle, and also the food preferences in women are slightly different from that of men. And also some factors like menopause, which causes rapid weight gain in women. And other very important hormonal problem or you would say metabolic or you know bone related problem which we see in women when compared to men is osteoporosis. That is bones becoming very weak and brittle and leading to fractures. This again is because of low calcium intake in most of the Indian women and also not taking care of proper bone health during pregnancy and lactation and also the menopause which alters the female hormones leading to weakness of the bones. So these PCOS, obesity, thyroid disorders and osteoporosis are four important diseases which are more prevalent in women when compared to men. Right. Uh, Dr. Sridevi, if I can just, uh, you know, ask you a quick follow-up question to that as well. What are the common signs and symptoms of PCOS? You just, you know, talked about PCOS as well and that's, you know, one of the things that causes a lot of problems. Is it possible that you have PCOS but you don't have any symptoms? What more should people know about this? Yeah. So basically, PCOS means it's actually a triad. I mean, three common things are seen. One is irregular menstrual cycles the girls usually or women usually have infrequent cycles instead of having a monthly menstrual cycle they have cycles only once in two three months and whenever they have cycle they may have excess bleeding that is one common symptom second important symptoms is presence of unwanted hair mostly in the face upper lip chin etc and also increased acne that is pimples these are two common symptoms and some women directly present with infertility i mean not able to conceive uh, children not have able to bear children and PCOD is the most common cause of infertility worldwide so the symptom and also some other problems like uh, discoloration of the neck and gaining weight all this also are a part and parcel of PCOD and uh, yes uh, if an ultrasound so PCOD actually is a triad so irregular menses presence of unwanted hair or pimples or increased testosterone level in your blood and ultrasound I mean scanning picture of PCOD it's possible that you have on, on a scan, if done for other reasons like abdominal pain, uh, they might show PCOD, I mean polycystic pattern, loss of lot of cysts in your ovaries. But it is not necessary that every woman who has polycystic disease uh, pattern, polycystic pattern in the ovary has PCOS. Um, it is called disease only if it is associated with irregular menstrual cycles and it has another features like hyperandrogenism, pimples, uh, unwanted hair, etc. Because 10% to 20% of even adults and girls, girls can have this polycystic pattern on ultrasound and it is not pathological. So only if it is associated with ir irregular menstrual cycles and other signs, then only we say it is as a disease. All right, uh, that's a very comprehensive uh, understanding of the symptoms. Thanks, uh, doctor, for that. Dr. Varma, uh, if I can bring you into the conversation, welcome. Uh, how does hormonal imbalance, uh, you know, play out in women? How does it impact uh, their health in general? Yeah, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And that's a very good question that how does hormonal imbalance affect women's health? So, in fact, every disorder which is associated with hormonal imbalance like hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, uh, diabetes per se, all are metabolic disorders affect uh, health of uh, both men and women and particularly women also. As uh, ma'am has pointed out earlier that even at menopause, there is hormonal imbalance that may lead to osteoporosis. Uh, there can be uh, excessive heart flushes, etc. Even during normal menses, we do see a lot of females complain of uh, worsening of their migraine headaches, general headaches as well. There may be mood disturbances. So even uh, during uh, when the hormonal disturbances or hormonal fluctuations are there, whenever are there, even during normal physiological states, they can affect women's health. When coming about the PCOD per se, uh, there can be five, five important things uh, which can affect women's health. Uh, some of them have already been pointed out by the ma'am herself. Uh, most common is uh, an ovulation that is prolonged amenuria or absence of menses. That is very disturbing for many females. And in fact, it is the most common symptom with PCOS. Second thing is abnormal 
Halal wanted here over, over the body that we call it hirsutism that can be very disturbing and require prolonged treatments, multiple treatments, including lasers as well. Uh, there can be acne or there can be in some women when uh, there is severe PCOS, women can have baldness or uh, androgenic alopecia as well. Uh, the other important thing is infertility in couples. Uh, uh, as already been pointed out, this is the most common cause of infertility. So these are the directly uh, related uh, adverse consequences of PCOS. When coming about the metabolic consequences or other consequences, the uh, greatest risk is uh, health-related risk is carcinoma endometrium, that is uterine cancer, when there is prolonged amenuria or prolonged absence of menses, because again, you have high estrogen levels uh, continuously, your endometrium is exposed of, there is hyperplasia and such women are at risk of carcinoma in C2 and later on they can have carcinoma endometrium. That's why you have been asked for uh, doing multiple, uh, 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 you can say, uh, a routine tests whenever we plan for the treatment if you have prolonged amenorrhea just to rule out this carcinoma endometrium. The other important health-related issue that may be associated with PCOS is uh, uh, diabetes because uh, insulin resistance is at the heart of this cause of this PCOS. And uh, since it is also associated with poor lifestyle and obesity, there are other adverse cardiovascular events that uh, these women who have obesity and PCOS, uh, the, the high chance, there are high chances to have future risk of uh, uh, heart attacks, strokes as well. So these are the uh, uh, major adverse or health related issues that may be associated with PCOS. Right, Dr. Varma, if I could ask you a quick follow up question as well. Uh, what is the main difference between PCOS and PCOD? Uh, you know, people often confuse the two. They can also be used interchangeably. So what's really the difference? Yeah, actually, uh, these two disorders are uh, used very frequently. And you can say these are not different from each other. However, in uh, some of the texts, it has been written that PCOS is one of the severe uh, forms of PCOD. While PCOD is polycystic ovarian disease and PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, better we should call this uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Why? Because uh, we call syndromes with those disorders in which we are not sure of exact pathophysiology or exact etiology. Uh, till date in medical science, PCOD, though it is very common seen in 8 to 15 percent of women, but still we are not exactly pin, uh, exactly we can pinpoint what is the exact cause of this disorder. There are multiple theories, hypotheses, like uh, right from the insulin resistance, uh, poor lifestyle, or increasing weight gain. Uh, there is a strong family history of also PCOD, and some of the recent studies have shown association with some genetic uh, mutations like utilizing hormone, follicular stimulating hormone, insulin in itself, right from the pituitary to the level of the ovaries, multiple theories are there. But again, since we are not sure what is the exact cause of this disorder, uh, uh, we still are living with multiple theories. We should better it call, call it as PCOS rather than PCOD. All right, uh, so that's an important clarification there coming in as well. We're going to sit into a very short break, but our conversation with the doctors will continue on the other side. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Health and Wellness Myths and Facts. Dr. Joshi, if I can come to you, uh, you know, PCOS affects many women worldwide and it is one of the leading causes for infertility as well. What does PCOS essentially mean? See, basically, what happens is when we use the word PCO, it means polycystic ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovarian disease, right? Now, poly means multiple, cyst is an unruptured egg. So, normally the ovulation is chocker mid-cycle in a normal cycling lady. If that doesn't happen, it remains behind as a cyst. So it's not a very ominous condition. We see people assume it's very ominous. It's not like that. The daily, the monthly cycling which should occur has not occurred. The eggs are remain behind. So you have six or eight eggs accumulated over a period of six to eight months. That becomes polycystic ovarian disease. So now this failure of ovulation should be the appropriate word that we use. Academically, we call it as failure of ovulation. 
that can have multiple causes when other causes are ruled out other endocrine causes are ruled out let's say we rule out a pituitary disease a thyroid disease a adrenal disease then we say okay what remains behind is pro polycystic ovarian syndrome right so we need to rule out these things and then we say it's pcos it's nothing but a failure of ovulation figuring out why there is no ovulation is what we are uh, planning to do as a specialist uh dr joshi if you've been diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome pcos is uh, it's been explained uh, it is important to understand the long term sort of health risks that are associated with the disease what are the health uh, health risks long term uh, for women with pcos right see around 80% of the women with failure of ovulation or uh, pcos have what you call uh, insulin resistance element to them particularly in southeast asian countries and particularly so true in india and this is associated you know invariably with a higher fat to muscle ratio of the person you not be really true obesity but they may have abdominal fat mass which is poor what you call visceral fat excess and this is associated with uh, what you call non alcoholic fatty liver disease commonly called as fatty liver and over a period of time when the compensatory insulin excess fails to keep the sugars normal that time we diagnose the diabetes and the insulin uh, levels have dropped below the compensatory values and the sugar starts rise so diabetes is uh, you know after many years of uh, pco untreated they can end up with diabetes during this interim period which could last a decade or two there is an increase in the chances of you know what you call uh, uh, atherosclerotic progression so it could what you call microvascular disease so many people with uh, let's say diabetes or cardiac problems or strokes uh, women 20 years before you ask them many a times they would have this history of irregular cycles being more irregular than usual they also have this problem with conceiving infertility is a consequence multiple ovulation cycles they have to undertake in a, a artificial reproductive centers so all these are problems other problems which can be there is let's say gallbladder stones what do you call uh, cholelithiasis that's one thing they also are more prone to have hypertension and the uh, dyslipidemia abnormally high ldl low hdl and high triglyceride this all ultimately is called as metabolic syndrome or a pre diabetic syndrome and these are people who can have you know, higher chances of breast neoplasia endometrial neoplasia and rarely they can also have a uh, you know converted into cancers i'm not it's not that they're too scared but when treated on time nobody should develop cancer of the breast or in the uterus the endometrial cysts so all these can be avoided by tackling this tissue uh, issue in young age itself right um dr shri devi what are the treatment options that are available for women with pcos so as i said uh, pcos is the most common cause of irregular cycles and uh, treatment depends upon what the uh, lady present with so actually most of the pcos girls or women are obese or overweight and weight loss is shown to improve outcomes through proper lifestyle dietary medication regular exercise of at least brisk like something like brisk walking 30 minutes a day for 5 days a week and all is known to improve the menstrual cycles and also improve the chances of pregnancy so lifestyle modification is to be there at every stage of treatment of pcod especially if the girls and women are obese or overweight and also having proper sleep uh, nowadays we have seen increased number of pcod patients in doing night shifts and all so because this uh, any night shift alters the hormonal rhythm in the body and they are no more prone to disease so having a proper sleep pattern also is very important second uh, then again the treatment depends upon what the girl or the woman wants some girls or women are worried about their menstrual cycles so if they are worried about their menstrual cycle cycles the treatment options are either a hormonal pills something called containing estrogen and progesterone which help to given monthly to regularize their menstrual cycles or if they do not if the women do not want to take monthly menstrual uh, anti hormonal pills then we can give something called a progesterone medicine once in 45 days or 2 months for them to have a menses so if it is a for the menstrual cycles hormonal treatment is the choice either a, a hormonal pill or what we say oc pills um to have regular menstrual bleed 
or or progesterone to have menstrual bleed whenever required so but if the girl or woman is more concerned about uh, unwanted body hair what we say hirsutism uh, like increased pimples or unwanted boy, uh, body hair which most of the adolescents girls college girls boys are more worried about their hair rather than their menses so here the treatment options vary again the best choice is again giving a hormonal pills which will bring down the androgen like the testosterone levels in the girl and the facial hair and all will come down over a period of time um but if the women are not willing for to taking this hormonal pills then what we have some medicines called anti androgens uh, the most common of which is called spironolactone which should be taken for at least a period of uh, hirsutism the treatment is difficult they need to take regular medication for at least one year for the effect to come and if the patient doesn't want to take any medication for uh, unwanted hair then they can go for non non medical therapies like laser treatment so focus like laser on areas of unwanted hair will help to decrease the hirsutism so if it is because of uh, unwanted hair then either medicines or laser therapy can help them but if it is for fertility i mean some women are not bothered about their menses if they are married they want to have children then the best choice is to go for a ovulation induction therapy which mostly we refer to gynecologists where they give medications like uh, clomiphene and letrozole and still ibf treatment or anything if these are not working so it all depends upon what the lady or girl presents with so for menstrual irregularity treatment is different hirsutism treatment is different and for fertility the treatment is different right dr varma what are the lifestyle modification steps uh, that are advised for women with pcos if you lose 5 to 7% of your body weight if you are on overweight or obese diet you can actually have resolution of many of the problems of pcos like uh, irregular menses as well as decrease in the unwanted body hair so definitely those who are overweight and obese it is advisable to target at least 5 to 7% and sometimes up to 10% of the weight loss now the important question is how to achieve it so most important thing is to have a calorie restriction we don't actually calculate our calories and there are some hidden calories uh, in terms of oily foods because indians do have lot of oily foods and we are not able to calculate how much calories we are dealing with for example if you eat one samosa this is around 250 to 300 calories which is almost half of your uh, daily meal requirement uh, one meal requirement so Uh, uh just avoiding these foods uh, just to say avoid the junk foods uh, uh french fries pizzas burgers uh, uh especially our adolescents which may have pcos problems uh, so uh just ask them to avoid these foods and instead ask them to take more of a uh, complex carbohydrates more of sprouts more of green vegetables uh ask them to, uh we have to prescribe more of fruits and vegetables and it is recommended to have two to four daily servings of uh, fresh fruits and uh, green vegetables other things you can advise for uh, not using uh, oil too much of oil during cooking you can use oil sprays to saute of the vegetable uh, instead of uh, deep cooking or uh, uh, prolonged uh, frying you can use saute your vegetables um this is about the dietary modifications and second thing comes is the daily physical activity uh, for the adolescent girls so who are in their teens there should be more vigorous activity should be prescribed in at least 1 hour of activity uh, and they uh, there should also be uh, in, uh, apart from just jogging running and isotonic activities there must be some strengthening activities also for bone strength as well as muscle strength for the young girls for the uh, women Uh, uh again 30 to 45 minutes of daily physical activity of at least brisk walking jogging running is advisable uh, uh this will not only help in dealing with pcos but will also help in uh, in building up endurance right. in uh just about uh, reducing body weight and also preventing diabetes also so this okay. is about the lifestyle modification okay i think that's very useful advice thank you doctors very much uh, for joining us on the show yeah. thank you